Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're back on the, the past to developers stuff for the June of 2019, and after having a look at the aviation parts, it's time to have a look at the ground forces. The ground forces, there's a little bit here for everyone, which is always nice, and it's not just vehicles, there are also some interesting ideas, especially when it comes to the Japanese. So let's get started. The first one is, of course, for the RDF-LT, which if you don't know what that means, it's the Rapid Deployment Force Light Tank. This is by Takanata18, and the best way to see it is it's a 1980s version of what a light tank was at least wanted to be by the US Army, seen as an upgrade of the T-92, and also obviously a further upgrade of stuff like the M-41 Bulldog. This machine was uh, in its prototype stage to become a force on the battlefield which could deal with a lot of heavier units than itself, and also be able to at least withstand a little bit of small arms fire, if not a lot. So there's two major versions of this. Uh, one has the 75mm on it and the other has the 76mm. We're going to focus on the one which had the fully automatic 75mm just because it's kind of an interesting thing. So in 1980, the AAI Corporation started developing the rapid deployment light tank idea and they were able to create this, the RDAF. LT 75mm. It, as you can see, is an incredibly low silhouette. It has on it a 75mm and it has three crew. Now you've got two in the turret and a driver here. You can see the extreme angles that this is at to obviously try and deflect shells. And even though it doesn't have a lot of arm protection, it was able to stop against small arms fire. It was mainly all aluminium and it was able to resist 14.5mm of AP. Now, what is the interesting thing about uh, this 75mm uh, is that uh, it was supposed to be an automatic magazine which held about 60 rounds to it. And what this meant was you could fire it mainly in burst fire, but uh, the idea was to fire about five rounds at an enemy, uh, mainly a Soviet tank, because obviously we're talking about the 80s, and um, shoot them in rapid succession in the same area to penetrate the vehicle. Now, what is interesting about this uh, 75 is that it had access to APFSDS. Uh, the 75mm round was known as the XM885, and it was supposed to have similar characteristics to the 105mm M774 round. So you can imagine in game that would definitely pack a hell of a punch. It was also stabilized uh, because, of course, it was. It was the 80s, and, uh, you know, we'd worked out all of that stuff by then. And not just uh, this. This design here, which had the turret, it was also mounted in what people will see as an incredibly interesting design. So you can see here, this is uh, the uh, we have two versions, uh, which one is armed with the 75 and the other with the 76. And then you have this version, uh, which is the AAI RDF Block One 75 millimeter Ares uh, gun in a manned auto-loading turret. Uh, so that's this here, and this is the one where you can see that it doesn't really have a turret on it. Uh, it's more of a gun which is mounted on a stick. And the best way of putting it is uh, it was mounted on a Sheridan chassis, which you can see here. The gun was mounted above everything else. And this was designed uh, for situations like this, so you didn't have to expose your vehicle at all to be able to fire on the enemy. As uh, we've talked about a lot about machines like the T-14 uh, Armata and also many of its prototypes before it, and and even, you know, stuff for the Americans. I mean, the Striker is probably the biggest example nowadays. This type of technology has been around for a hell of a long time. And people have been trying to master it because if you can keep the crew alive uh, of a vehicle, you know, crew survivability is seen as one of the highest uh, things to work towards. That's why, you know, the Abrams is seen as very good. The survivability of the crew is incredibly good in that machine. And a vehicle like this, which would have more of an unmanned turret or maybe... Um, it's maybe an unmanned turret is not the way to call it, but basically a, a gun on a crane, uh, so you didn't have to 
expose yourself to an enemy uh, would be the way to go for it. So you can see that it was tested um, in its three separate forms uh, with the two different guns, 75 and 76, and then of course uh, this one that uh, we sit here. And uh, as I said, it was supposed to fire in five round bursts, and with something equivalent to the M774 round, it could be incredibly potent in the game. Then, of course, uh, if you uh, d if you fail to get a contract uh, to build these in mass production, why not try some other stuff? Uh, so they added some AT. Uh, well, I believe these are AA missiles uh, to it, uh, so it had an 8-pack of Stinger SAMs on it, uh, alongside the gun itself. Uh, so this could have been an interesting machine, uh, if we ever see it in-game. I don't think it's really required, now that we have the ADATs, but, you know, uh, there's always an interesting idea behind it. And then this is the 76mm version with the M32 gun. You can see it's a lot more chunky, at least on the top, and uh, you can see the extreme angles that it sat at. Me, personally, when, as a fan of light tanks, uh, you know, the whole of the light tank part of the tech tree for the Americans is incredibly fun. It would be nice to see uh, these designs come to the game as well. They've got extreme gun depression. Yeah, they don't have a lot of armor, but they have an extremely potent gun, and that's generally a recipe for a very fun machine, especially since it's stabilized. It'll be interesting to see how they if they ever put a, something like this in game uh, to see how the actual functionality of the gun works uh, when it comes to how to control it and also the balance of the game as well. Uh, there's a lot of maps which have either rocks or hills on them which you can kind of just sit behind and look over and this kind of worries me because you don't have to uh, show yourself to be able to shoot an enemy. Kind of like uh, when I talked about the M901 ITV, uh, the fact that that machine can just kind of sit behind unless you make it so you can hull break the ATGM launcher or on this you can hull break like the gun itself and uh, that destroys the vehicle. I'm not sure how you would actually balance it. But anyway, it's a cool design. I would love to see it in game. The next one is something which is a ridiculous name. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know, uh, you know, how to go through it. But this is by Peev, and uh, it's a pro bung strager mit three act stabilis stabilisiertum prototype. Uh, so. In the 1960s, uh, obviously the MBT-70 project had started, and if you didn't know, the Americans and the Germans came together to produce the MBT-70 and also the KPZ-70. It was a joint project uh, to try and work out the next stage of tank development. Now, at the time, in the 1960s, while all of that was going on, the Germans also had a bunch of separate projects going on at the same time, trying to work out specific things. This was one of them, and the basic proposal for this uh, tank was to try and create a weapon system which could, you could stabilize a 105 on it uh, on at least a two-plane or a three-plane stabilizer. Uh, so what they did was they created this vehicle with a very funky turret, as you can see. It's uh, incredibly circular, and it also has a 30 millimeter mounted outside of it. You can see the whole of it is mounted outside because I'm guessing they couldn't fit it in the turret or it was just seen as an extra thing. So this was born out of an idea of stabilizing the 105 and eventually became its whole entire new vehicle. They basically took a leopard hull, uh, stripped everything out of its engine and everything included, added a new engine in the form of a thousand horsepower one, and uh, also uh, they stripped out the turret and added this one in with the 105 millimeter. And as you can see, it did exist. There's uh, a lot of really interesting info on it and uh, how it went. But since, you know, you had the MBT project and the KPZ project, so this was still just deemed as a test to make sure that they, they could get the stabilization of the 105 correct. So then they could use that going forward. Because remember, the Leopard 1 we have in game is not stabilized. Uh, it isn't, uh, you know, it doesn't have a stabilized gun. And therefore, if they can create a machine which 
does have a stabilized 105, uh, such as the Leopard A1A1, this would have been a great development and evolution in tank design for the Germans. And, well, they were able to do it, and this was one of the projects which was able to get them to that point. So, when we talk about in-game, you know, where would this fit? Well, it doesn't really have a ton of armor, has a decent amount of speed behind it, and also it has the 30mm with the very, very long, uh, you know, long uh, gun here. I think it could fit pretty well uh, as a premium vehicle, uh, some form of premium in rank 5, but with a stabilized uh, 105, you're going to have to be careful with it. I definitely think it should be added though, it was obviously built and tested, I believe there was only one of them built, maybe two uh, if I remember correctly, but I remember the, oh no, sorry, the first and last prototype tank, so yes, they built one and uh, that was it. So the next one is this machine here. So what this machine is, is the 2S14Z Halo S, or as it's commonly known, the BTR70TD. This is by a KD, or KD, and uh, what this is, is a BTR70 uh, <laughs> BTR with an 85mm mounted on it. The 85mm is the 2A62 gun, and uh, we actually had a look around for this gun, uh, because it was actually present in one of CK16's uh, Tech Tree videos, and uh, the gun itself seems to have been uh, put on a few prototypes, and that's really about it. Uh, it is a it's an evolution on the 85 millimeter that was used in World War II by the Soviets, and they mounted it on some very odd chassis, including this BTR-70 that you see before you. So the idea of this would be it would be a fast uh, vehicle uh, in the form of a tank destroyer that would be able to go around and just annihilate whatever it found. Uh, nine millimeters of armor though uh, shows that it could be machine gun to death, uh, but the 85 millimeter would be incredibly dead. This was a 1970s vehicle, mid 1970s, and the uh, they added a muzzle brake to reduce the recoil by 80% uh, to try and make sure that it wouldn't annihilate the tank after you fired it. It was able to shoot up to 26 rounds a minute, but the penetration was considered too poor for the modern Western tanks at the time. So uh, good fire rates uh, overall, but if you're a tank destroyer, you kind of have to be able to kill tanks. And that's one thing this one was not able to do. The next set is some AEC armoured cars. And this is from, once again, KD or KD. And um, we covered, I believe at some point, the armoured car research line which he has created. Where he basically goes through all of the cool and interesting armoured cars from World War II that you could add to each nation. And this specific post is about the AEC set of armoured cars uh, that you find from the British. And uh, for me, I would love to see some of these in-game. We already do have one of them in-game, in the form of the AEC Mark III, which you see here. Uh, it is uh, sat at rank 2 as a light vehicle, one of the only scouts that Britain has right now, and uh, it is, unfortunately, a gift vehicle. Uh, it mounts the QF75mm, as you can see, and uh, has a pretty sturdy chassis, And uh, but let's start from the beginning. So the first one uh, that you see here is the AEC armoured car, uh, the Mark 1, uh, if you want to call it that. And uh, it has the Valentine turret on it, uh, which has the two-pounder uh, attached, uh, so they just took a Valentine turret and took chucked it on a Matador chassis, which is what you see. There was 129 of them built, and they also saw action in North Africa uh, through uh, late 1942, and some uh, were reported to fit the Crusader turret uh, in with the six-pounder on it. Unfortunately, we don't have any pictures of that, but that would have been pretty cool to see. The next one, as you can see, is the AEC Mark II. The main difference between it and the one before it is some additional armor plating around the sides. They also, incre they also increase the power of the engine to 158 horsepower diesel engine and also the 6 pounder gun. Uh, so the 57mm that you see on top of it. Uh, so this was uh, the... Uh, this uh, was, uh, well, it's kind of in-game, I suppose, uh, but not really. And then you have the last version, which is the 75mm that you can see here. And it had 65mm worth of armor on the front, uh, which was well-sloped. It could give an effective thickness of 95mm 
95 millimeters, and uh, it was more than any other armored car at the time, and it had a better engine on the Matador uh, tractor, uh, which allowed this AEC to go to about 65 kilometers an hour. Uh, so this one was definitely much better than the ones before it, but you could easily add these three into the game, and uh, it wouldn't really be too much of an issue. We already have the guns in game. Uh, we kind of have the chassis in the forms of the AA, which we have in the game. Uh, so why not, you know, just put these in, not as gift vehicles, but as tech tree vehicles. Would be lovely to see. The next uh, set is the Kachi. Now, this is from Shimakaze-chan, and uh, he's talking about the Type 2 Kami and also the Type 3 Kachi. The reason why a lot of people want these in-game, even though we already have the Kami, is because they're amphibious. And they're amphibious by adding kits to them. Uh, so you can see here that you add uh, the front of it, and here, and the back of it here, and it becomes an amphibious vehicle. The Japanese actually use these a lot for amphibious duties, and it's a really interesting history uh, when it comes to it. So what What's the difference between the car me that we have in game, which is actually getting its BR drop to 1.0, and the car chi? Well, the car chi is slightly different because it's based on a different chassis. It's based on the chi he chassis that we have in game, and it also sports the 47 millimeter, so it gets an increase in firepower, but it's a hell of a lot bigger than its counterpart. You can see how big and blocky this thing is uh, when you actually take off its, uh, you know, naval uh, uh, attributes, I suppose we'll call it. So uh, you could have five to seven crew in this as well, a driver, bow gunner, loader, gunner, commander, radio man, and also mechanic, and a lot of people want uh, these machines in game just because of the fact that, you know, you have another amphibious option. But you would also have to be an absolute monolith of a machine which has absolutely no armor. And that is the biggest issue with these machines. Uh, it, it would be very similar to the Rogo, where you have the Rogo in-game, uh, which is, you know, rank 1 premium. And uh, what that means is uh, it's got a lot of space in it, it's got a decent gun, but it's got no armor on it, and that's why you never see anybody use it. It would be exactly the same for these machines, unfortunately. The armor is 10 millimeters to 50 millimeters. I think 50 millimeters is a little bit uh, overboard. I would have to have a look at the frontal stats of this, but I highly doubt that it would be 50 millimeters. Uh, but the main thing is you would need the whole package on to be able to be amphibious and if you didn't have the whole package on like if you took off this bit this bit and this bit which is basically what the car me is uh, that we have in game right now you know it's the the version of it which was the land version and not the amphibious version then you're pretty much just getting a bigger car me with a 47 millimeter so if you want that cool uh, i don't think it's that necessary unless we add the amphibious components then it would be definitely interesting the next one is uh, the heas uh, so this is from azens and it's talking about the type 89 if you don't know what the type 89 is in my opinion it's the best ifv that we have in game right now uh, it's got a very good gun uh, which pens a lot and has a good fire rate it can fire missiles on the move and it also has a stabilizer it, and scouting of course it has pretty much everything you want from a high tier IFV, where the other ones, uh, they definitely struggle in some ways, like the Bradley can't fire the AT gem on the move, the Warrior doesn't have a stabilizer, the Baglet doesn't have a stabilizer, uh, you know, he... The TAM uh, doesn't have 80 gems, uh, so, you know, and it doesn't have a fast firing gun, so, and I suppose the BMP2 can't fire on the move as well. So the Type 89 just kind of has the best of both worlds for everything, so it would be nice to see it uh, in game with some um, more additions to it as well, just to give it m more reason for people to play it, even though it already is really good. So, Azen's talks here about the Type 79 anti ship, anti tank missile launcher, uh, and uh, the reason why it's being talked about is because it seems to have two modes of operation. Uh, the first one is a missile AS, and the other one is a missile AT. So, a missile AS is uh, the HAS, which is seen as a high explosive anti ship missile, and then you have the HEAT, which is the high explosive anti tank missile. Now, uh, both of them are the same. 
Uh, they are the same form of missile, it seems. At least that is how it's written here uh, from it. And the warhead of the missile AS is a thin uh, wall of HG with a proximity fuse. Its fuse operates when directly hit to enemy landing craft or pass over it uh, to detect change of geomagnetism. So it seems like it all depends on the warhead of the missile in uh, what is, you know, what it's going to be. But the, the basic premise of this HEAS missile, which may actually be different to the heat one, is uh, you fire it above a target and it explodes downwards. Uh, so you would fire it, uh, so this conquers hills, uh, this conquers terrain, the idea is to fire it, you know, above and then it explodes down into a vehicle. Now this would be great against uh, stuff which doesn't have a lot of armor and hopefully if the HE mechanics get fixed, uh, it won't be too good against uh, specific machines uh, such as all of the top tier MBTs, otherwise we may have a few issues with the whole balancing idea. But yeah, uh, the the basic way you can make it work in game is make it so once it gets above a target it just explodes into it and, uh, and then you have to do some penetration calculations after that overall i think it would be really nice to see it does open the gate to a lot of scary weapons though especially for the americans uh, when it comes to this technology so just be ready that you may get a really nice uh, update with the type 89 which has these features but when and uh, when other nations get wind of this, uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff flying through the air that you ain't going to do a lot about. And especially if the systems come in, uh, which are designed to stop these types of systems uh, going. Anyway, the next one is the pinnacle of Italian tank design. <laughs> And once again, it's by uh, Kald or Kaid, and it's the M1643. So remember what that means. It's a medium 16 ton 1943 vehicle. And you can see here, wow, what an absolute wonderful thing. Uh, it was based off the British A13, so a mid 1930s vehicle, or the BT5, a mid 1930s vehicle. So this was about 10 years out of date uh, when it was conceived, uh, so it's very similar to something like the Valiant from the British uh, in that way. And uh, it was developed uh, as a fast tank, which was for uh, North Africa. And the only issue with this is the, uh, the Italians weren't exactly the best at building engines uh, at the time. And yes, I know a lot of people are going to tell me about, oh, the lack of resources, oh, the you know the industry wasn't there oh the folks on planes yeah fair enough whatever i understand i've been through it before i understand all of the uh issues the fact is it was a fact the uh, you know the italians struggled in many ways uh, when it came to their tank design and it wasn't helped by their engines and also it wasn't helped how they stayed with this uh, riveted idea uh, so this was a prototype which was built to be fast it wasn't exactly built for armor 30 millimeters on the front, highly sloped, not going to do anything against machines in 1943. Also has the 47 millimeter on it, uh, and also it was supposed to have the 75 millimeter for the production version, but of course, because of the armistice and also the uselessness of the vehicle, I'm sure uh, it would have never got to that point. Uh, also, it has the Christie suspension uh, because it's based off the A13 and the BT5, and also a 55 kilometer an hour speed. So they got the speed up there uh, but they had to pretty much annihilate everything else along the way uh, for this 16 ton machine so yeah the uh, prototype was stored and scrapped in 1944 which is why we have no uh, real pictures of it today but you can see it here uh, it's your basic uh, design doesn't fit 1943 remember uh, panthers were running around at this time big shermans you know the m26 was being produced cromwells uh, were not coming into service but they were getting there you know this would be more similar to the covenanter of early war period or as i said the valiance which was just a big mistake uh, when it come to when it came to everything tank design from the british so yeah uh, should it be in the game? Yes, uh, it was built, it was tested, we know all of its characteristics, uh, so yes, bring it into the game, but it will not face
least 43 vehicles, otherwise it will massively struggle. Would love to see it though. And the last but not least is, of course, the French. Captain Daisy 97 is here to talk about the VAB uh, Mephisto, or the Véhicule de l'Avant Blonde. I'm sure is how you say it. So uh, this is an APC uh, which is outkitted with some hot missiles. Uh, the vehicle uh, de la Von Blande, as you can see, the VAB Hot or the VAB Mephisto, uh, the module Elevateur pa Panoramique uh, or Soleil sur Toe Orientable. But anyway, uh, the VAB Hot, uh, it's an anti tank version of the troop carrier has just massive uh, missiles on the top of it, very similar to uh, stuff like the BRDM, uh, which we see from the, uh, which we see from the, ooh, uh, the Soviets, uh, thank you, Brain, uh, it was nice of you to engage. Also, you know, obviously we have it uh, from other troop carriers from other nations, you know, the Warrior technically as well, and also the Type 89, all of these machines designed to carry troops, but also designed uh, to use ATGMs uh, to launch from. So why not have another lightly armed uh, vehicle with wheels uh, with ATGMs? That to me sounds really fun. Uh, we have a bunch of them in game already. The one with tracks, the Sturm, uh, is still a little bit high in its BR, in my opinion. But for me... Uh, I would love to see uh, a machine like this in game. It makes sense to be in game. It's a little bit big, uh, so <laughs> it's probably not going to be able to do the uh, the sneaky sneaky idea. But when it comes to firepower, the firepower would definitely be able uh, to uh, you know the it would definitely be able to be useful uh, when it came to the French and the French at high tiers. I mean, you got the AMX thirteen hearts. Uh, the AMX-13 SS-11, you don't really have a lot of stuff that fires ATGMs uh, that I can think of, uh, so why not add a machine which can fire some ATGMs to give a bit of variance uh, to the French tree? I definitely agree uh, with this one, I agree with all of these, all of these uh, would be wonderful picks uh, into and put into the game, this one would struggle a little bit but it should still be there, the same with the M1643, so overall yeah, let's get all these uh, bad boys in the game, sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank B. Young, Blackie, Daniel Stanton, John Reinman, Leonard Rudnick, Martinez, Matity, Moxie, Nick Graham, Alobrolo, Super Cacti, Elove Goats, and Seductive Trashcan for supporting the channel.